What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla spy and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to answer the question, is there about to be a stock market crash from what we're seeing? Or is this going to look more like a pullback in my personal opinion? I'm going to give you guys what I think is most likely going to happen. Talk about some very important charts and how things are looking. And then break down more factors which will affect the markets by looking at much bigger time frames. But before I begin the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about how this is looking in my personal opinion. Well, looking at SPY, the first thing I want to note is that we have this very, very big change in structure. So if I take an extended trend line and kind of like connect it from like right here, uh, you can see that we had this very, very nice uptrend. We're also holding above our, uh, you know, the, the 20 EMA right here, this blue, not blue, sorry, this green line right here. You guys see the green line? We were holding this as our supports throughout this entire uptrend. And SPY recently broke through this. It was ever since, uh, you know, just a couple, about a week ago when we had this big red bar. And since then, it's been trying to rebound, but we've been struggling to break past uh, lower resistance levels. So the trend on SPY has really shifted, right? You'll notice that before, before SPY was doing this, it was making this high here, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, right? Higher highs and higher lows. But now the trend has shifted in a way where we had this high right here at 425. We came down and a lower high uh, 524 came down. We kind of struggled around 520, came down, struggled again, a little bit under that, and we're just continuing to come down. So it's making lower highs and lower lows, and the structure is turning a bit more bearish. Now, one thing we could do is also take a uh, kind of like a resistance trend line, like structure like this, kind of draw it up, maybe a little bit like this. And we can also connect this right over here. And we have like this little channel that's kind of developing on the chart. It looks a little bit like this, however you want to draw it. So from here, you can also draw it like this. But either way, this is what SPY is like trying to hold up around. And we'll have to see how this holds up around as time progresses. So the question is, in my opinion, uh, are we going to continue to maintain this bearish structure like this? Are we going to continue to downtrend, right? Because now SPY is starting to downtrend. Yes, it is starting this little drop. And what I want to say is that it all depends, right? That's the crazy thing about the market. It's always depending on this factor, this factor, CPI, this. It's absolute madness sometimes. That's why it makes a lot more sense to just look at this on a daily basis. But here's what I'm eyeing, basically. On the daily time frame, go to the daily chart. <laughs> Excuse me, guys, I apologize. On the daily chart, look at the 507 area, the 50 EMA. That's going to be our very, very pivotal support. Now, if we lose 507, whatever the catalyst is, is it because of Iran attacking? Is it not that? Is it because of CPI? Whatever it is, this support is going to be key. And I want to let you all know that I'm not saying this is a big crash. I don't think it's going to be a crash because it's very unlikely that they're going to let the market crash during this election year. I personally believe that. I think that we could get a very healthy pullback, but then the buyers will step in when everyone expects to crash. So there's a trap that's forming right here. What's going to happen is we'll have to watch the support. Does SPY come up, come up like this and then retest this 507 area where this, this EMA happens to be right here? And then... If we end up losing it, right? If we end up losing the support, we're going to easily come down to fill this gap. 497 is going to be coming pretty easily. We'll have to see if it holds that support or not. If we don't hold it, we could easily start dipping even lower into like the 480 area. That's also a very, very key Fibonacci retracement level, which I measured earlier. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. But I just wanted to call out many of those very important levels. If we take the chart like this, right, and we... We look at where this trend, uh, this entire trend kind of like began. You guys can see that we're on a very, very swift uptrend. It's been very, very violent, very, very strong. Taking this Fibonacci retracement from this low to this high, we can see some interesting things. Uh, you'll notice that 497 aligns with our 0.236 retracements, and the 0.382 retracement aligns around 480. So those are some potential retracement levels. If we lose 497 and we start approaching like 490, I would say there is a risk of us going all the way down to like 480 and then getting the bounce. Uh, but in my personal opinion, I don't think that this is going to last forever. I think that this is a trap because it's very simple market psychology. What's going to happen is if SPY does tank, whether it's to 497, 480, one of those will likely come if we lose the 50 EMA. 
it's not going to lead to a crash. We're not crashing back down to 450, 420, you know, the crazy levels people are talking about on YouTube. No. What's going to happen is they're going to let the market sink. Okay. And I have a feeling that this 200 EMA is going to catch up to like 480, maybe even a little higher than that. That might be where we end up bouncing off of. So right here, this might start catching up over the next couple of weeks. But what's going to happen is everyone is going to turn into big bears. The majority of people, people are going to start buying insane amounts of puts as this starts dropping. And maybe it's going to go on until like May. Maybe it goes on until closer to the end of May. Who knows? It may take one to one and a half months. And once everyone turns bearish, when all the puts come in and everyone expects the market to do this, crash all the way down to 430, everyone's going to think the market crash is here, the recession is coming. No. The exact opposite is going to happen. It's an election year. They're going to push this back up from June going into September, and we're going to be making new all-time highs. It's going to be a big bounce when people least expect it. Remember when I was saying that last year, when we had this little dip right here from August, the start of August all the way until the end of October, right? It was about three months of just a downtrend on SPY. What happened? We got this monstrous squeeze. And I think they're going to do the same thing again because we we finished 2023 on a very strong end the market was insane it was approaching the all-time highs at the time it was it was on a big rally that's how the market closed at a very very strong year on paper and they're getting ready for another big rally for the election why that's why they're going to dip it they're going to use whatever catalyst they can and they're going to get ready to pump it right back up they're using all this data as excuses okay so the same trap is going to happen again I'm, I'm warning you guys like many months in advance and we could measure it using an Elliott wave sequence. So you could take a, well, it really depends on like different factors, of course. So I can't like, I can't call out exactly where, uh, you know, we're going to end up getting our balances or anything like that. Uh, but I was looking for this, our Elliott wave sequence. So actually, before I draw that, let me do one more thing for you guys. Just give me one second before I end up drawing this out. Uh, let me close these real quick just to make this a little bit more clear. So if we take this top right here, what if the first wave is down here at 507? And then we get a little rebound. We rebound a bit. And we get wave two all the way down to 497 or something. Or maybe this is going to be like the other one all the way down to wave three. Who knows how low this is going to be, but this is usually like the bigger wave. One more rebound. And our final bottom comes right here before this thing starts to rally for the election. This is one way you could measure it. It really depends on different factors. It's hard to kind of like calculate everything like this many months in advance. And I think the best way to do it is to just like, the best way to do it is just to kind of like draw everything out in a way where we just look at this on a daily basis and look at what data is coming out. But I am anticipating a little downtrend. I think the market is getting ready for this. It is due for a little pullback. And we have this big gap that looks very, very nice. We're going to likely fill that gap so it might rebound a bit and then continue to sink. Or we could just sink all the way down to the gap if we get an attack on Israel. So who knows? I think the best thing to do is be very patient. And ultimately, re regardless of how long it takes, I can't predict that perfectly. Regardless of how low we go, I can't predict that perfectly. I think the market is going to have a V-shaped recovery. It's going to drop all the way down to whether it's 497, 490, even 480, the points two, three, six retracement, right? R wherever it is, our key Fibonacci retracement, they're going to dump it Everyone turns into bears, expects the market to crash, and then they're going to launch it back up as we approach the election. I think that's going to happen. That's kind of like what my view is. Uh, we might see a little pullback. You know, however low it goes, we'll see. But I don't think it's going to be a crash. I think those people on YouTube screaming the crash are the ones that get the most views and make the most money off their YouTube ad revenue. I think that it's most likely just going to be a little pullback and we're going to make our way back up later on. And this is all just a trap. Okay, the market does not have to make any sense. The market is not the economy. It's simply just these big institutions that dictate everything. They control the rules, they control the game, and they make money off retail. How do you make money off retail? You dump the markets, get everyone excited for a crash, and then launch it right back up and cause another squeeze. 
Just a few weeks ago, we were at all-time highs. We were pumping. How much is really changing? We had a hot CPI report just a few weeks ago. The market continued to hold up, right? We get another hot one. Now the market finally comes down. But then the thing is, what's going to happen after that? I'm just trying to say that the data is like, it's very uh, eclectic. It could be interpreted in all these different ways. You know, it's very ambiguous. And they use this data. Sometimes they're going to use the data as an excuse to drop things. Sometimes they use it to pump things. That's something I've noticed in all of my time trading. And the best thing you could do is just look at your technicals, look at your charts and be open-minded, be very adaptive in a market like this. So they're going to use data probably to dump the markets more and more and more. The same data was launching the market like a month ago. Now the same data is going to cause the market to dip. They're going to let it dip, let it dip, get you all to turn into big bears, as many people as possible. Everyone's going to be screaming, crash, the crash is here, recession is coming. And then they're going to launch it for the election. It's going to be crazy. So that's what I'm predicting. I find that to be very probable. But let's not worry about 480. Let's not worry about 460. Let's focus on 507 right now. Maybe over the next week, let's see if SPY breaks this or not. If we do break this, there's a gap to fill down here at 497. We could rebound a bit off of it and then continue to sink or not. We watch 507 first. That's going to give us like a very, very nice 10-point potential move, which is very, very good for trading, for scalping, and et cetera. All right, guys. So is this a crash? No, I don't see any signs that this is truly a big crash. Is this a potential pullback? Yes, definitely could be. For Tesla... Tesla is on a big downtrend. It's very simple. It's been downtrending, downtrending, dropping, dropping, dropping. All right. But what's interesting about Tesla is we have a double bottom like structure. And the daily chart is showing a little bit of life right now. So if I, let me just clear this up a little bit. The daily is turning a little bullish. And this does look like it could try to rebound a bit as we have a lot of gaps above. But will Tesla start filling those gaps out of nowhere? No. It's going to depend on earnings. That's going to be a very, very big factor. So Tesla might just continue to do this little choppy price action thing it's been doing for the last few weeks. Back and forth price action, let it do it. But when earnings come out, earnings will determine if Tesla tries to get that break or not. This 50 EMA is going to be in the very, very low. So it's currently at 183. Let's first try to get above 178. We do break that watch 180. Then we have this test coming. If we break through this, it has a lot more upside potential coming. We don't break the 50 EMA. It is what it is. Tesla is just going to remain at this low level. But the chart does have potential. I see a double bottom. I see a symmetrical structure. But we'll see what happens with earnings. I think that's the best thing I can tell you is just wait for earnings. That's going to determine if this thing continues to launch back up or if we get a big rug pull in the chart. Okay? So that's my view of Tesla. How about the QQQ? Well, the QQQ has been downtrending. It's been downtrending. This thing had its high up here at almost 450, maybe a little bit under. Since then, it's been going lower, 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 lower highs. It's already downtrending. So it has a very similar setup as SPY. That's one thing I've noticed as of recently. The QQQ has a lot in common with SPY. It's more stationary, though. We have this 50 EMA on the daily at 434.8 for the yellow line right here. If we lose this, it's going to come down to fill this gap probably, all the way down to 425. A big drop is coming just like for spies. Do I think it's going to happen? I do favor that, but just to be safe, I have to watch for confirmation. For now, we're just going to look at that move. We're not focusing on this thing dropping down to like 390, you know, the 300s. I'm not worried about that. We haven't even lost 434.97 yet. So let's, let's give this some time. Let's be patient and we'll see how things go. Uh, in terms of, let me double check one more thing. Going back to the chart, you could draw this in many different ways. Uh, if I were to start from the very, very bottom right here and take my handy dandy Fibonacci tool, this is not going to be perfect. It's going to be close, but not perfect, of course. I can't make everything perfect all the time on my first goes, but this is close enough. So basically, you know, the gap happens to align just like how Spy's gap aligns with. Maybe I could draw this like more precisely to get this to look more exact, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, hold on, right here, basically, the gap is very, very close to our 0.236 retracement from a Fibonacci standpoint. I expect this to be tested if we lose the 50 EMA. And then if we lose that support, we have another support right here. 
416 and then 408 is going to be our key support at our points 382 retracement that also aligns with this previous resistance becoming support so you guys can see this 410 zone is going to be a very very interesting area of interest for these buyers so those are your levels on this thing it's very simple is it going to come all the way down to 410 i don't know maybe it will but why are we worried about 410 if we haven't even lost 434.97 yet if we lose 434 this 50 ma then yes we could come down to fill this gap and i'll be talking about these low levels hasn't done it yet there's no sign this is a crash this is simply looking like a healthy pullback in my opinion all right guys why do i say all of this why do i talk about the market kind of like dumping maybe for a few months and getting bought back up because first off people on youtube are making money off of retail by screaming the crash is coming the crash is coming where is the crash they've been saying that for months uh should the market have crashed it could crash yeah because of because of economic data if you want to go down that route or anything like that you can make that argument that hey a crash should be coming cpi is going up but the thing is the market is not solely logical the market is designed to screw over retail and these institutions will do what's best in their own interest meaning even if we don't get the best of data and let's just say that everyone is shorting the markets these market makers could still squeeze shorts on a friday or on a thursday sometimes it could happen so that's the reason why the market is moving the way it is and i think that there's a big trap coming i think that they're going to they're going to dump the, the markets again uh, i think that if we do get that pullback if we end up losing the yellow line the support and we come down to fill this gap i think that it's going to be a temporary pullback maybe it'll last two months or something like that and then after that they're going to get ready to launch things back up for the election it's the election year don't forget about that that's kind of like what my view is excuse me it's a very very minor pull like it's not going to be huge not going to be massive it's not going to be a crash this is all part of their game because they're pulling it back so that they they're going to start buying while retail starts selling at the bottom they want you to think it's going to be a big crash when it's not it's another trap only for them to launch it back up remember history is repeating itself because when you zoom out all the way the same thing happened before when the qqq was near its all-time high not all-time high but at a very high level at 387 at its time and it had this pullback all the way down to about 342 right this thing dropped about over 40 points everyone thought this would be a big crash this wasn't a crash this was a trap and they were getting ready to launch the market like crazy for the end of the year getting it to you know it's all-time highs getting it to pump they were getting ready for the big move to the upside that's why they dumped it they wanted you all to think it was going to be a big crash it wasn't a crash we got bought back up and I, i'm telling you the same thing is likely going to happen again it's going to come down everyone's going to think it's going to crash but instead the buyers will be waiting and they're going to launch it back up after a few months approaching the election that's what i think is my general view of the market uh, i want to make it clear that i don't see this as a crash i think that this is more of like a healthy pullback and the market is so manipulated it's manipulation that's the reason why this is all happening it's not because that the market's fair it's not because the market's logical it's all manipulation all right so hopefully this video was insightful hope you guys have a good understanding of what could end up happening and just know that we shouldn't expect us to just crash 20 points 50 points out of nowhere you have to watch your levels so start one level at a time take it slow and we'll see where this thing ends up going be patient be safe guys and i'll see you guys very soon on the next one thank you for listening i'm marky to the moon the long term is still bright no matter what you see and be careful with what you listen to when it comes to youtube and things like that so question everything you could even question my own videos i'm open to that possibility do what's best for your own selves enjoy the weekend guys and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks again and peace out